Hello and welcome to the presentation on application servers licensing, looking at the basics of licensing Exchange, SharePoint and Office communication server. My name is Vicky Lee and I will be taking you through this presentation today. In this presentation, we'll be going into a bit of detail on the licensing of Exchange Server, Office Communication Server and the SharePoint technologies. But let's first have a quick recap on some of the licensing fundamentals. First of all, let's take a look at Server and Cal licensing. Now this is a licensing model that is used by most of our server applications. But let's take Windows Server as an example here. Supposing we have three servers in our organization that are running Windows Server. To license this properly, we would need to purchase three Windows Server licenses, one for each server running Windows Server. We then need to license the end users or devices to access the services of that server, and this would be done using a Client Access License, or CAL. Now CALs come in two types, User CALs and Device CALs. Now on the left hand side where we have an individual user that is using many devices to access the services of the server, we would need to purchase for them a user cal and then that would license them to access all three Windows servers in the network. On the right hand side where we have a device that is used by many users, we would then purchase a Windows server device cal, licensing the device to access the services of the server and it can be used by any quantity of users. If we have external people, in other words, non-employees of the company that we want to access the services of the server, we could also buy them cows. It is important to remember that one Windows Server cow will license you to access all the Windows servers in your corporate network, but that the cows are version specific and they must match the highest version of server being used. So if two of these servers were Windows Server 2003 servers and one was a Windows Server 2008 server, then the CALs used must be Windows Server 2008 CALs. Now, for the products listed at the bottom of the slide, SharePoint Exchange Server and Office Communications Server, and really the three products that we're concentrating on today, these have, both have two levels of CAL, Standard and Enterprise CALs. So imagine in our scenario here, we're talking about Exchange Server. We have three Exchange servers sitting on the network, and we want our users or devices to access the services of those servers. So we buy them user or device cows. However, if we want them just to access the core functionality of the server, we would buy an Exchange Standard cow, and this would license the users or devices to access just the basics of Exchange Server. Whereas, if we want our users to access the full functionality of the server, we would purchase both a standard and enterprise cow. You should never ever have an enterprise cow without the underlying standard cow. And when you have both cows, you're then licensed to access the full functionality of that server. The same would be true for any external users. If we wanted them to get at the full functionality of the server, again, we would purchase both standard and enterprise cow. But if it was only the core functionality we wanted them to access, then we could just buy a standard cow. One area of confusion can be the difference between standard and enterprise editions of servers and standard and enterprise cows. Now, when a customer purchases a server, the first thing that they do need to think about is what edition of server do they want to work with? Do they need the standard edition of the server or the enterprise edition? And the main difference between standard and enterprise editions of servers is scalability. How large is the organization? How many users are there? How many servers do they need to work with? So for a smaller company working in a single server solution, the standard edition could well be the right edition for them. Whereas if a company is looking to cluster together servers and give support to larger numbers of users, they might well want to go for the enterprise edition of the server. So that would always be the first decision. The decision on cows is then based on functionality. So if the end users only need to access the core functionality of that server, be it the standard or enterprise edition of the server, then they could just work with a standard cow. Whereas if they want to access the full functionality of that server, again, irrelevant of whether that's the standard or enterprise edition of the server, they would need to work with both the standard and enterprise cows. Now, some of our cows are available 
in cow suites as well as being available standalone. And we have two main cow suites, the core cow suite and the enterprise cow suite. The core cow suite consists of the window server cow, the SharePoint and Exchange standard cows, and the System Center Configuration Manager Client Management License, and provides a very cost-effective way to purchase those cows in one suite as opposed to standalone. The Enterprise Cow Suite, which is a more comprehensive cow suite, consists of the whole of Core Cow, plus, for instance, the Enterprise Cows for Exchange and SharePoint Server, and both the Standard and Enterprise Cows for Office Communication Server. Along with our Rights Management Services Cow, some of our System Center Management Licenses, and some of our Forefront Protection Licenses. The other license just to bear in mind before we look into the specific products is the external connector license. Now this is there to license non-employees of the organization to access the services of your server. We already mentioned that if you only have a few non-employees, you could just purchase them cows and that's absolutely fine. But if you have a large quantity or an unknown quantity of non-employees accessing the services of your server, then you would want to purchase an external connector license. And you'd buy an external connector license for every server that they are going to be accessing. So having looked at those basic fundamentals and had a quick recap there, let's go into our server products and we're going to look first of all at Exchange Server. Now Exchange Server is our email server and one of the lovely things about Exchange is that it does provide the end users with choice on how to consume their emails. So it might well be that they want to just work with Outlook. You know, they come in in the morning, they sit at their desk on their own computer, go into Outlook and they can access their emails. Or alternatively, go for browser-based access using the Outlook web app. So if you're not sitting at your own computer, but you are on any computer with an internet connection, via the browser, you could surf to your Exchange server, log on, and then access your emails. And an environment that is very, very similar to the full-blown Outlook client. Alternatively, you could use Outlook mobile access if you had a Windows mobile powered device. That will synchronize with the Exchange server, showing you your emails, calendar appointments, and so on. And finally, there is the option to telephone the Exchange server via the Outlook voice access and actually talk to the Exchange server and listen to your emails and deal with your calendar appointments via voice. Having looked at the different ways in which you can access your emails, let's move on to now how Exchange server is actually licensed. So Exchange Server is licensed following our normal server cow licensing model. So at the server end, you would need to purchase either an Exchange Server Standard Edition or an Enterprise Edition license and assign that to the server that's running Exchange. The client to Exchange is Outlook. So for any device that is using Outlook to access Exchange, that would need an Outlook license, which can be acquired through the Office suite. So if you are running Office 2010 Standard or Professional Plus Edition, that already includes the Outlook license. Then the cows are required. And again, we've already commented with Exchange Server that that has both the standard and the enterprise cows. So you would need to purchase either just the standard or the standard enterprise cows based on what functionality you want to access. And then finally, there is an external connector license to license those non-employees of the company to access the services of that server. So how do you choose between the different editions of a server and the standard and the enterprise cows? So on the left hand side, when we look at the different editions, we have mentioned already that they are based on scalability. So the standard edition is aimed at those companies that don't have many users, that don't have requirements for very large mailboxes, and may have availability requirements, but they're not as important as maybe the larger company. Whereas the Enterprise Edition is aimed at large companies with large numbers of users, large mailboxes that have high availability requirements. So multiple exchange servers running together and needing to deal with the failover type situation. So the addition of the server is chosen and then we come down to cows. Now the standard cal of exchange really covers the basic kind of email and calendaring, calendaring side of things. 
along with web access and mobile access. Whereas the enterprise cow covers um, the unified messaging aspect, which is your answer phone messages coming into your inbox, the antivirus, anti-spam protection, the whole compliance um, area of exchange, and things like the voice access, being able to telephone the exchange server. So it is always a case of going, as I say, for either the standard or enterprise edition of server, and then the standard or standard and enterprise cows based on the functionality that is required. Okay, so having looked at Exchange, now let's go into Office Communication Server and again a quick recap on what this product does for us. So Office Communication Server does a variety of things. It gives us the instant messaging solution. So for enterprise instant messaging, which is secure and auditable, if you want to do that, then OCS would be the product to do it for you. Another very useful thing is the whole presence integration. And when we're talking about presence, it's knowing someone's status, whether they are online, offline, in a meeting. And it's all about knowing the person's status so you can choose how to communicate with them in the best way. Then there's the web conferencing area. So if you want to run a web conference or what you might have heard of being referred to as a live meeting, Office Communication Server will do that for you. And in the diagram here, you can see there's a, a presentation being run. And um, because there is a round table device here, you can also see um, you know, the people who are in the meeting room attending the meeting. Whereas the last area that you can deal with with Office Communication Server is voice integration and that's OCS running your whole, whole phone system. So it's really that whole voice over IP area enabling you to, for instance, from communicator, dial up your colleagues and talk to them over the computer as opposed to having to talk to them actually on the phone. So again, let's have a look at how OCS is licensed. And you'll see this licensing model is very similar to Exchange Server. So again, at the server end, you have a choice of the standard and enterprise editions of Office Communication Server. The client application is um, Office Communicator, and Communicator is part of the Office Professional Plus 2010 suite. So if you have that suite, you would already have your Communicator license. Again, there are standard and enterprise cows available based on the functionality that you need to access within Office Communication Server. And you also have external connector licenses. But do be aware with Office Communication Server that there are two external connector licenses. So if you want your non-employees just to access, again, the core functionality of OCS, you would buy just the standard external connector license. If you want them to access the full functionality of OCS, then you would purchase both the standard and enterprise external connector license. Again, with Office Communication Server, there is that choice to be made initially between the standard and enterprise editions of the server and then the standard and enterprise cows. So let's take a look at editions first of all. The standard edition, again, is really aimed at the smaller companies because it is all about scalability. So companies that are potentially running on a single server with 250 or less users. Whereas the enterprise edition is aimed at companies that are going to be running OCS covered over a few servers and maybe have more than 250 users. So the customer initially would choose between the standard and enterprise edition. When it comes to the cows, the functionality covered by the standard cow is really the instant messaging functionality and the presence integration. But the standard cow does also cover things like the web access for Office Communicator and the mobile access for Office Communicator as well, that work in a very similar manner to the web access and mobile access for um, Outlook. The Enterprise Cal of Office Communication Server covers the whole web conferencing area and voice integration. So as ever, it's a choice of the standard Cal or the standard and enterprise Cal. But when are Cal's really required for Office Communication Server and when are they not required? On the left hand side, you can see any user that has an instant messaging identity hosted on that server will need an Office Communication Server cow, as will anyone who has a voice extension. 
But also any internal users either organizing or attending a web conference that is being held over OCS would also need a cow. Whereas you don't need a cow for any user receiving a call from someone who's using OCS, any user placing a call to someone on OCS, any public IM person who is communicating with someone over OCS. So what we mean here is any public user using maybe um, Windows Live Messenger or AOL or Yahoo. If they are instant messaging with someone who is using OCS, then they do not need a cow. And any external user, in other words, non-employee, attending a web conference hosted on Office Communication Server, they also don't need a cow. Other points to note, there is an infrastructure requirement with Office Communications Server of running Windows Server with Active Directory and SQL Server. So licensing for those products would also be needed for anyone deploying Office Communications Server. So let's move into our final area, looking at the SharePoint technologies. As we have done previously in this presentation, we'll take a quick reminder of what SharePoint does for us and then move into looking at how it's all licensed. SharePoint, as the name really suggests, is about sharing information, but it's about sharing information and what we call collaborating with people at different levels. So it might be working with people, just individuals or in a team. So my team, for instance, we have a SharePoint site where all of the presentations that we work with are held. So there's really that team level of sharing. Sharing will also go out company-wide, so really through a company intranet, you might be sharing information with the whole organization as well as just with individual team members. Or how about sharing information out of the company, but to known people? So for instance, here at Microsoft, if we share with our partners information, that would be placed on the extranet. They are known people that we give a log on to that site so they can access the content. And then finally, there is sharing out to the outside world and to the unknown people via the Internet. So the SharePoint technology is giving us a single infrastructure to create either an intranet, an extranet or an Internet solution. There are a number of different technologies making up SharePoint. So we'll have a look at them all starting at the bottom of the slide with SharePoint Foundation. And SharePoint Foundation is there for team level sharing. So when within a team you want to have your presentations, documents, spreadsheets and so on um, accessible to everyone, you could put them on a SharePoint Foundation site. SharePoint Designer is the product that would be used to customize that site. So if you want to do very detailed customization, SharePoint Designer can be used there. If you want a company-wide intranet, so you want to um, share content across the whole organization, then you would go for full-blown SharePoint Server. So that is one of the key differences between things like SharePoint Foundation and SharePoint Server is the scope of sharing. Whereas if you want to share content exclusively to the outside world and you want to do an internet site, then the SharePoint server for internet sites editions could be the editions that you want to go for. They come in two editions, standard and enterprise, all based on the functionality that you want to provide on your internet site. Whereas if search is very important to you and you need a high-end, fully customizable search solution, then Fast Search Server for SharePoint would be a good one to go for, and that would run on top of full-blown SharePoint Server. So how is it all licensed? Well, SharePoint Foundation and SharePoint Designer are both freely downloadable products, so no licensing required there. SharePoint Server just comes in one edition, so you would just buy your full-blown SharePoint Server 2010 license, but it does have standard and enterprise CALs. So as we've seen already, that's based on the functionality you want. If you want to access the core functionality of SharePoint Server, you would go just for the standard CAL. If you want the full functionality, then you would have both the standard and enterprise CALs. The SharePoint Server for Internet Sites editions are just licensed per server, so that's a server license, but no cows required. But there is the restriction that all content held on that um, SharePoint for Internet Sites edition must be made available to external users. 
And finally, the fast search for SharePoint, that is also licensed per server, so a server license and no cows required for the fast search element, but it does require that you are also running SharePoint server with both the standard and enterprise cows. Now this slide gives you an idea of the difference in functionality between the different SharePoint technologies. And let's have a look at that search column. You will see, for instance, that there are search servers that you can work with. There's Search Server Express and then just Search Server. And these servers are both there just to give you a search element from SharePoint. Search Server Express is freely downloadable, but there are limits on the number of items that it can index and therefore it can search. SharePoint Foundation, you'll see, gives an element of search, and really this is team searching. Whereas if you go for SharePoint Server with the standard or the standard and enterprise cows, you get a higher level of search. And as I've already mentioned, the fast search server for SharePoint is there for top-end, fully customizable search solutions. Beyond that, if you look at the rest of the functionality, as you might expect, the more cows you have, the greater the level of functionality you've got. So, for instance, if the business intelligence component is essential to you, you would want to work with SharePoint Server with both standard and enterprise cows. Or again, if integration with other products such as Visio are important, you would again need both the standard and enterprise cows along with SharePoint Server. Another thing to bear in mind is that SharePoint Server does also have a requirement for SQL Server, so you would need both a Windows Server and a SQL Server license to work with SharePoint Server. So as we draw this presentation to an end, let's take a recap on what we've looked at. We went through some of the fundamentals of licensing, and then we've looked more specifically at the basics of licensing Exchange Server, Office Communication Server, and a look at the SharePoint technologies. So that concludes this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed listening to it and wish you the best of luck when taking the associated assessment. Goodbye.